Good afternoon. <laughs> I, uh, it is August the 2nd, and we're getting some wind already from the so-called hurricane that kind of, whew, that kind of petered out, not entirely, and we're supposed to get leftovers from it, and uh, it's heading this way. So I thought I'd make a quick video and have a little fun because there's a couple of subjects I wanted to talk to you about today that are interesting and I'm not going to tie them all together right now at this second so if you're patient and you watch a little longer I promise you it will all come together and it will be kind of interesting okay so let's just take a quick walk in here having said that and I had my figs out in the sun for a couple of days then I'm thinking, you know, well, it's going to be windy and maybe a lot of rain. They, they were calling for up to five or six inches of rain, but now I don't know what the forecast is. And, well, I noticed something. I'm, well, I've got a lot of figs that are getting ripe. And these, again, these are Rondi Bardot. And uh, it's one of my favorite figs, and I've talked about it so many times. Because I, I just think it's one of the best and most practical figs to have in your collection if you live in the Northeast. There's no doubt in my mind about it, at least for me. Uh, for whatever it's worth, and I often use that caveat, uh, I find it, at this point in my life, uh, indispensable in terms of being added to and included in my collection for all time i just i just love this fig because there, there's so many things that it does that other fig varieties don't for one thing it tastes good in a pot it tastes good in the ground it matures quickly it ripens so fast i mean honestly one day you can be out here looking and it's not even starting to turn or maybe slightly starting to swell and then the next day, you've got an almost ripe fig like that one. And then the day after, there you are, you have a fully ripened fig. And I mean fully ripened. Now, that's a wonderful attribute. And especially if you're living in a place like where I do in the Northeast, with the crappy weather we get and short seasons, you, you don't want a fig that will get, you know, ripe over a long period of time. Or if it's in your collection, okay, you better have a bunch that don't. Okay? And... Uh, I, pr I prefer the early ripening fig varieties. I've talked about it over and over again and tried to stress it as much as I can. And there's good reason for that, okay? Take like long yellow neck, for instance. Uh, long yellow neck will start to swell. And you can, you can see that fig in some of my videos. Uh, 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 fig Feast, uh, Beauty and the Beast. Uh, there's so many of them, you know, there's not so many, but there's a few. Uh, that you would really enjoy watching if you want to see a long yellow neck and other fig varieties that I grow. Uh, abracadabra figs. Um, I don't know. There's so many. I'll talk about more of them later. But um, the point I'm trying to drive home here is that you do want a variety that ripens quickly once it starts to swell. And this protects you from the birds more and so on and so forth. L take like long yellow neck, which I was saying. Long yellow neck, uh, it, it just will linger on the branches. <laughs> it seems like forever sometimes before it finally ripens. And there are other varieties too, without going into a lot of detail about all of these different varieties, that share that, I think, unfavorable characteristic. You know, so if you want a fig that once it starts to ripen, ripens quickly, and you get an abundance of ripened fruit, like this tree, okay, um, Rondi Bardot might be the ticket for you. We're going to get to this one too. Uh, here's another one that takes a long, a longer time, uh, Black Madeira. Black Madeira takes a longer time to ripen once it's uh, started to show signs of swelling. Uh, it does take a while before it comes to full ripeness. So, let's get back to the, to the birds. I noticed outside when I put them out there for a couple days to get some of the yellow sun. And in this greenhouse, it's quite open. And there's a breeze through here all the time. And the only difference really, because of the way I have it opened up, the only difference is that when it rains, I can protect my figs and put them in here. Or when it's really windy, they get quite a lot of shelter from the wind. Not total. 
But in this case, I noticed that the birds, the birds were starting to <laughs> peck at my figs. And it, you know, and I was remiss this year a, a bit, you know, I've been so busy doing this and doing that. And I didn't put out my usual protections like my owl. And now I've gotten my owl out of storage and have him deployed out in the yard as a guard. That pays right. I don't mind. And he's a good, a good worker. Um, and now her help to protect my fig trees from these unpleasant little pests that we call birds <laughs> that can really do a number on some of your figs once in a while. So I wanted to talk about this and it, and it reminded me of a story. Now it's back in here, so it'd be protected a bit, but it reminded me of a story that I wanted to tell you. And I'm going to tie it all together, I promise you. Let's, let's take a little walk now that we've been here to see this variety or to see this tree. Keep up the good work there, buddy. Don't let me down. <clears throat> let's go over and take a look at a few more trees. Now, this is another Rondi Bardot. And as you can see, it has quite a lot of ripe figs on it. Main crop figs, ripe. But take a closer look. Take a closer look. Do you see that? See that lower fig? Take a look at that fig. Take a look at this fig. Wow, huh? Take a look at that fig. Now take a look at that thing. Now, I told you I'd tie it all together. Isn't that a strange looking fig? Or is that a fig? Is that a fig? It sure looked like a fig, even to you, didn't it? Well, these and this one, and it looks pretty darn good. They are fake figs. Now, <laughs> and let's take a closer look. And this is the part that I'm enjoying. Because I think I might have tricked a few of you out there too. And there's a reason why I wanted to trick a few. If you listen to my story, you know why. I'm going to tie it together. But there's plenty of real, legitimate, beautiful, right figs on this tree. It's loaded. As you can see... But, hold on, let's, let's take this net and I'll put it back a little bit out of my way so I can talk to you and show you a few things without know, falling all over the place and getting caught up on things. But, here we go, look at this. Look at that. Isn't that kind of cute? <laughs> my wife picked these up for me. I don't know what it was one of the craft stores and uh, she's always on the lookout for things like this for me because she knows I like to use this method and you might be saying thinking and this she got for me too Isn't that a beauty I wish that was a real one huh it's just a artificial fig and I've got a bunch of them you might say a bag of tricks that I'm going to talk to you about and that's what this video is all about pull them out let me get down here I'm lazy today so I'm just gonna take a rest and I'll sort of show you how this is done and why it's done and more importantly when it should be done and I did not do it this year not yet but I'm going to do it on some of my other trees and on my Celeste tree which hasn't quite begun to ripen but will shortly I'm going to do this, and this is a, a technique, and here you can see these little tinkle bells, whatever you want to call them, acorn bells, that she was able to get at a craft store. She picked them up on sale, bought a bunch of bags for me, and I have had them for a long time. This, These things too, this is an artificial, it looks like an apple maybe, or some kind of, who knows what it is, but it looks like a fig to me. Okay. And this 
is not supposed to be a pig, but I'm going to tie that in too. You're going to find out about this and what that is and the story that goes behind that. So let me quicken the pace here. The whole idea with these artificial figs is to put them on before your figs begin to ripen. And what happens is the birds come, and this is true, the birds come and they peck, 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 peck at these hard objects, which are not figs. And after a while, they get completely discouraged. And you should see, it's funny. I have to try to get it on film someday. It's so funny. And they're peck, 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 and then they move on. And so all of the birds in the neighborhood will eventually peck themselves out, so to speak. And they, they realize because all the other figs are green, not ripe like these. Okay, it's too late to do this now. Okay, you, should, you don't want to do it now. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. But you do this before your, your figs begin to ripen. And for me, I, I've got some trees that I can do it to. For instance, my Celeste and some brown turkeys. And I've got some uh, uh, Mount Etna types and hardy Chicago types and multi black types that I can do this to. And it works very well. Okay, I've got a lot of different methods that I use, including the nets that I've shown you before, and I've got the, the owls and things, and they, they kind of work. And I don't have a huge problem with the birds, but hey, I don't want to lose figs to the birds. I don't mind sharing a few, but not, not all of them. And if you let the birds get out of hand, they're, they're do that. And these, you know, these, these other, this is not one of them, but the smaller bags, the, the uh, I wanted to talk about those two, because they work. There's uh, gift bags, organzo bags, uh, they they do work, but this is a different technique because you use these sort of while the, the fruit is coming to fruition, you cover it. Uh, whereas this, you want to do it beforehand. So you trick all the birds and they get disgusted and they get discouraged and they peck, 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 peck. And then they just leave and they don't come back. And so most of the birds in the neighborhood have been pretty much trained to understand that they're not going to get anything yummy from the tree okay and so then when they do start to actually ripen like these it, it doesn't draw their attention okay but this you put these on before they ripen with the hopes that the birds won't peck through them and sometimes they do and sometimes they don't the, the cautionary thing that I'd like to add about these is that if you've got a humid environment and or if it's like rainy or you know, there's a drizzle for a few days. I mean, they get wet, you know, and I'll tell you what, they aid in, they, I think they, they actually exacerbate the problem of uh, splitting. And uh, you will, if you have a few of the figs uh, in these bags for protection and, and you get that a couple days strung in a row where it's a little bit wet or, or humid or a few showers, uh, you will see that the other figs that don't have these bags are much better in quality and I, I don't like doing things that decreases quality but when it's really dry out when it's hot and, and, and arid they work they work wonderfully you know they work pretty good but of course they're never going to work as good as if a, a fig can get the sun the real sun you know that that they really uh, thrive in and which of course aids in their perfection in terms of taste and quality so let's get back to the story try and make it as quick as I can um, <laughs> I'm running out of time already really I shouldn't be uh, going on and on about this but it, it's fun and before the winds start blowing too hard I thought I'd get this one in today but one time and then we're going to tie in this I'm going to tie this in pretty soon what that is so one time I was uh, over when I used to when I was a young guy and I lived with my parents many years ago and uh, my or at least I had just recently lived with it uh, my one of my best friends in life his name was Mario and then my uncle Mario they were both under a very large cherry tree my uncle Mario was a great gardener he was just one of the best ever and they were, I saw them and my mom saw them and she said go get the guys go get the men and and tell them that I made a fresh pot of coffee and uh, invite them to some coffee. So I said, okay, I'll do that. And I went outside 
and I went over to the guys and my Uncle Mary was sitting under his cherry tree and they had a bowl of cherries that they had just picked. And uh, my friend Mario, he was leaning up against the tree. And I said, hey guys, you know, I said, hey, my mom just made a fresh pot of coffee. And I said, and she said, come and have some coffee. And they said, oh, good, good, you know, in their broken accents. Uh, we come, we come. I said, okay, you know, great. And I said, hey, you know, and, uh, you know, I looked, I looked there, you know, I, I saw his son Gino up in the tree, you know, up in the tree, the teenage son that he had. And I said, Gino, I said, you could come too, as I turned and walked away. So as I was walking away, my friend Mario says to me, Luigi. And I turned around, he goes, uh, uh, where's the Gino? I said, what? He goes, you told the Gino to come and have a coffee. Where, where's the Gino? I said, up there. I, I pointed up at the tree. <laughs> and it was, a, it was a scarecrow that my Uncle Mario made. And he had done a fine job. And he put the scarecrow in a beautiful red flannel shirt. I mean, he had shoes. He had, he had little gloves. I mean, it was a, he had a hat, you know. And, you know, it, it was the perfect size of a teenager, you know. And, and what I had done is I just, I guess, nonchalantly looked up in the tree or without, without really looking in detail. And I just assumed it was Gino up in the tree. And I talked to them, invited them to coffee, and I felt very embarrassed, you know. And my Uncle Mario, to add insult to injury, he says to me, and he, he stands up, he's laughing. And in a fun way, I hope. He says to me, he goes, hey, Lou, he goes, uh, he goes uh, you, you dumber than the birds, he said to me. So I think I might put this in my title, actually, you know, of this video. And it was all in fun, but I never forgot that lesson. I never forgot that lesson. That day, I was dumber than the birds because my Uncle Mario showed me that they had eaten some of the cherries. So they weren't all fooled, but I was. Okay, well, maybe they had gotten used to a scarecrow. I don't know. In my own defense, I'll say that. But how do I tie this in? Now, I hope you enjoyed that story. The one another one that I'll never forget. Well, one time I was visiting my Amish friends in Pennsylvania near outside of Lancaster, about 10 or 15 miles on a farm. And I was talking to the young lady there, uh, the daughter that we had met when she was just eight or nine years old. And now she's in her thirties. And uh, I noticed in the strawberry patch, I noticed that there were these Lots of them. You know, every couple plants, there was one of these rocks. And I was kind of fooled at first. I reached down to grab one. And I said, wait, that's not a strawberry. And so I asked her, I said, my ma. I said, what, what's, what's the deal with this? And she said to me, they're for the birds. I said, how so? She goes, well, they see that those rocks painted red that my dad and brothers did and they peck at them. They come down and they peck at them. And after a while they get discouraged and they don't come back. And then when the strawberries really do start to get ripe, they have less strawberries damaged by the birds. So it reminded me of the incident with my uncle's and of course I put that together. So I guess this is a long roundabout way to just simply say that the birds can be fooled. They can be fooled. And this is a simple way to discourage the birds early in the season from eating your figs when they start to get ripe. It discourages them. They lose interest, okay? And it works. And you don't have to worry about additional splitting and you can always throw a net if it doesn't work real well or if you have more of a problem. You can always throw a net over it just for safety and you get out your little trusty owl and things like that. But when it comes to the birds, sometimes they're very, very, very persistent. And every little trick that you can learn in the books, like this one, okay, is certainly welcome. So with that, 
I think I'll end this story and end this video. Uh, I could pick a few of these. This is a fake fig too. Look at that. See that one? Cool, huh? And that, and those are not. And there's some really, really ripe ones here, and I should really just reach in there and open them up. And... Oh wow! Let's see. Hey, we gotta, we gotta eat one, right? Oh wow! Let's just eat one. There's plenty on here, and I'm gonna taste this. Mm. I love Rondi Bardot. Last year, as I stated in my last video, Rondi Bardot won out also uh, as being the first main crop fig to ripen. And so it's noteworthy to remember that if you like fig trees that come into fruition early, 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 a principle that I've stressed over and over and over again. This one has to be on your list, on the short list. Mm. I've been eating these for a few days now. And my son ate a few when I was away on vacation. Maybe I'll end this video this way, very quickly. I want to show you a, an Italian honey fig. A Latarula there and I've been gobbling these down and there's another one I noticed this morning that is ripe several getting ripe I had a couple yesterday that were delicious and here I've got a lot of Smith getting ready getting ripe or I've eaten a few and one fell off this morning and I gobbled it up like a little fig pig that I am. But everything seems to be coming into fruition now. Hold on a second. Sorry about moving the camera around so much. Take a look at that. Doesn't that look great? Italian honey fig. Let's take a look at it. Break it open. Oh, wow. Look at that. That is a beauty. The wind's kicking up here. Hope it's not too much of a distraction. Okay, I'm going to taste this. I'm going to eat the little half and save the big half for my wife. Mmm. Sublime. Exquisite. It's sweet and delicious, and it does have a, fla a rich flavor to it. It's certainly no sugar fig. Trust me. You will like the Italian honey fig. And it's very, very, very practical for New Jersey. Look at, look at this fig. Look, look how productive it is. See them swelling up there? It's too tall for me to get up there. All right. Thank you very much for your visit. I hope you enjoyed my stories and this video. Good day.